So now I'm going to show how the, the basic approach is to play the snare drum by holding on the sticks. I'm going to show you how to play by using match grip. Match grip is pretty easy for the students to understand uh, about the, the name of, of the word match because both sticks are going to look the same in each hand. But in order to have the student create sound, we have to let them understand that they're creating everything right through this inanimate object. And we're trying to have our hand and our stick act as one. Now anyone can pick up a stick and hit a drum, right? But the, the good percussionist goes through the process of understanding the, the process of the fulcrum of, of the grip. So I just want to go through that step with you. If we think about this stick, we want to make this as an extension of our arm so then it can be a part of our body. With playing with match stick, I usually have the students take their stick and try to balance it right in the center of their finger. Now then I'll ask them, okay, we want this stick to do all the work for us because, you know, we, we don't want to do a lot of work, so we want this to do all the work. So I'll ask them, do you think that this stick can bounce on top of this drum? Well, since it's perfectly balanced, it's not going to bounce very well because it's balanced. So then I'll say, okay, well, go ahead and let's pull back, bring your hand a little bit closer back towards you, about an inch away from where it was previously. Then I'll say, okay, have your stick here and go ahead and just let your stick bounce on top of the drum. And keep it on this joint of your finger this whole time. Now I'll say, let's go ahead and bring it back another inch. Do the same thing. I'll bring it back another inch. Bring back another inch. So now I would ask the student, well, where do you think that it bounces the best? And they'll obviously find that sweet spot. And you can help them figure out where that sweet spot is on that stick. On this pair of sticks, that this pair of sticks is, is a brand called Vicfirth. Uh, most everyone is very familiar with this brand. It's a great, great set of sticks. It's called SD1 Generals. Nice thing about this pair of sticks is it has this Vicfirth flag on it. And this is typically around the area where you're going to find you're going to have your success for your fulcrum. So then, once you're very comfortable where that fulcrum spot is going to be at, I'll say, okay, now go ahead and take your thumb, and this is where you as the director is going to help your student out. You're going to push the thumb down on top of the other finger, and you're going to say, on top of here, there's going to be a nail driven right through your finger, pop, right out the other side, and you're going to spin it out so that nail is going right through your stick and your fingers. Then along the way, you can say, ow, that really hurts. But this is where you want the student to realize this is your fulcrum. Go ahead and have them add in a lot of tension. And you say, do we want to play with tension? No, we don't, because T stands for tension, and tension is bad. So we'll say, we do want to have the fulcrum there, but we want to relax it a little bit. So we'll go ahead and try this again. Just let the stick bounce. Okay, now that we have the student figuring out that we can bounce over here, we're going to tell them now we have our fulcrum taken care of. We want to have our fingers wrapped around our stick. And now this time, we want to have the palm of our hand facing downward. Just kind of like we're waving. We're going to take this, we're going to go up and down. We're just going to bend at the wrist. Go ahead and have them just keep their arm nice and stationary right here. Bend at the wrist and down. Now this is another uh, good process to think about. Do I want to play with my wrist or with my arm? 
Well, a non-trained uh, percussionist is probably going to pick up that stick, have a lot of tension, and do what I'll call like the bam bam. Bam 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 bam! Okay, so that we can see all this tension that we have going on with here. And in fact, you could even have the student try that so that they can see oh, that really takes out a lot of energy. Now, tell them, relax your whole arm. Now just bend up at your wrist and do the same thing. The student should be able to figure that out right away because it's very, it's still going to be the same kind of stroke, but it's going to be a little bit more natural, you can say. Okay, so now when we have this concept going on, we're, again, we're just working with one stick to begin with. I like to have students, since we're still trying to figure out where that balance point is and the whole concept of where we're balancing the stick, I'm going to keep working on the balance. And I'm going to start working on the multiple balance roll. Now we're not going to talk about that this is multiple balance roll yet, but I just want them to get this concept of relaxing the stick. So what I want to say is we start off, we can have the same stroke, keep it down and see how many bounces they can create by using this, this fulcrum. During this time, you're going to be able to notice if their hand is too tight in here, they're going to be too tense. You can definitely see some uh, some muscles popping out of their arm if they're really trying to get too much pressure in there. So you can help them along the way by relaxing. In fact, you can even help them up with their hand and help them bring their hand down. Then what I like to have the students do is I'll say, okay, now you can do this bounce. Go ahead and pick it up after six bounces. So we're just going to count together. Two, three, four, five, six. Then have them pick it up with their fingers over here. What we like to do, we like to keep our fingers close to the stick and actually holding on to the stick because they will serve a purpose for the students to help control the stick. If we have some fingers flailing off to the side, Try to do as much as possible to bring that in so that we can work on a good grip. Three, four, five, six. Then work down from six, five, four, three, two. So now let's do five. Four. Three. Two. And of course, one. Do that with the opposite hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Okay, so that's how I start to approach working on the balances.